Hello everyone and welcome back to Project Fern. We've got the sport car again. We're going to be working on this car and we're going to be doing the front disc and pads today. I've already jacked the car up and put it on axle stands. If you want to click the link below, there's a video on how I jacked the car up and where the jacking points are when I did the oil and filter on the car. But let's get these wheels off. I've already undone the wheel nuts slightly while the car was on the ground so that it just makes it easier to get the wheels off. So let's get them off and get these disc and pads done. The tools we're going to need today are the half inch breaker bar, we've got a 3 8 breaker bar, 3 8 ratchet, extension, we've got a 7mm allen key, a 13mm impact socket, some pliers, a flat screwdriver, a brake piston pushback tool, a wire brush, obviously the brake pads, the brake discs and some copper slip. Let's crack on and get these discs and pads done. I'm going to start off here on the passenger side. It looks like there's some heat damage here. The discs are quite low. I don't know if this caliper's seized on. This car has had two calipers in the past, both sides. The seal on the piston breaks, moisture gets in, and then obviously it seizes. So I'm going to start on this side. Hopefully I can get the piston freed off, and we'll go from there. I'll just ping this spring off, this retaining spring. I'll show you how you put that back on later. It can be a bit tricky. But on the back here, we've got two 7 milli Allen bolts that hold this caliper on. So I'm going to take them off first and then get the caliper out of the way. I've got the caliper off and even though it looks like there's heat damage and stuff, the piston has moved back slightly. So I've undone the cap on the reservoir to just to stop any pressure build up as I push the caliper back, the piston back, sorry. I'm going to slot the tool in now and yeah, push it, push it back. But I'm just going to show you now how it works. It just works on a ratchet system and it will slowly push that piston back. Right, I've used the tool to push that piston back. Sorry I couldn't show you then. It's just hard to do it with two hands, get a tripod in and have a torch on it at the same time. But the piston is back. The reservoir's not overflowing, so I can whip that old pad out now and carry on with removing the bracket, cleaning it up and getting the new discs put on as well. There's still quite a bit on these pads. I think they say three millimetres you've limit when they want to start changing them out. The other side is in better condition, which makes me think that something's caused this to stick which is why i'm going to give it a right good clean up with a wire brush and make sure we get some copper slip on it doesn't look like there's been any put on it in the past so it's better just to put it on it stops this problem from happening again in the future there's literally two 13 milli nuts on the back bolts should i say they can be rusted sometimes can be quite hard to get your socket on it's better to line the socket on give it a waggle get it on or hit it slightly with a hammer when dealing with anything brake wise it's best to wear a mask i'm going to wear one in a minute when i start cleaning all this gunk off but yeah let's get this cradle off now and we can get the disc off as well that's the cradle off as you can see in the grooves where the pad sits gets very corroded gets gunked up i'm going to get a flat screwdriver in there now clean it all up get the brake spray on it get the wire brush on it and i'll show you what it looks like in a second that's the cradle all cleaned up the best i can I've scraped off all the crud and stuff. I've also cleaned around this hub here and I'll put a bit of grease on there to stop the disc sticking in future. Let's get it all built back up now. That's the caliper back on. New pads are in, plenty of copper slip. It's just time to put this little clip on. I'll show you how to do that now. They can be a bit fiddly. I like to use the pliers to do it, so I'll show you how to do it now. There you go, super pretty, new discs and pads, the awkward clips put back in, it's time to move on and do the other side. Just while we're at this point, can't stress how important it is as well when you put the car back down on the floor to pump the brake pedal. If you forget to do that, you're going to set off, press your brake pedal and they're not going to work because the pressure's not there. I like to pump it in between doing each side, some people don't, but I've just pumped them brakes now and then I'm going to go and do it on the other side. It just stops the um, brake fluid from spilling out of the reservoir. It has a little bit on the floor there. But yeah, let's get on to the next side now and then get this car back on the floor. That's discs and pads done on both sides. As I said before, next step is to get inside the car, 
get the foot on the brake pedal and pump it until it goes absolutely rock solid, which it just does. So that means you'll have brakes now. So let's get this car lowered down. Well, get the wheels put on first and then lower it down. It's job done. Wheels are back on, all tight. Remember people, pump that brake pedal. I can't say it enough. Let's get this back up now and dropped on its bum. And then we'll finish this video off. Last thing to do is just tighten up that reservoir cap. Brake fluid level's fine. The brake pedal has been pumped. I'm just gonna go and do it again, just to double check. Yeah, absolutely rock solid. Happy with that. Wheel nuts are all tight. New discs and pads are in. Everything's spot on. So that's how you change the date, brake pads and discs on a Ford K or a sport car. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, if it were helpful. Any comments, put them in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video.